Welcome everyone to our second Keep Lounge chat. For those of you who do not know, the Keep Lounge is the National Museum of Bermuda's new web series and takes its name from Bermuda's largest fortification and home of the National Museum of Bermuda, the Keep. The series features discussions with artists, artisans, and scholars on a range of topics related to Bermuda history, art, and culture. Today I'm joined by NMB Director of Learning and Engagement, Lisa Halley, and well-known and much adored Veronica Ronnie Shamo. And we're going to chat about the history and tradition of palmetto weaving. Right. In February, uh, the museum opened its doors for free for local residents, and we offered a series of activities. And one such activity was to learn about palmetto weaving and try one's hand at it with Ronnie. And it was by far our most attended event, and we thought it would be important to continue the conversation here today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was awesome. It really was. And, and the amount of people that came up and the amount of feedback that I got, you know. And now I'm going to come to Carter House nice. when I open Carter House. Well, when we open Carter House. And of course, I put blankets on the bank and we sit under the palmetto tree and we weave the weaving. So that's, Deb's got a shot up of um, us in situ at the yeah. National Museum in the boat loft. Um, but before we go there, I just wanted to say a little bit more about your craft, actually, if you don't mind, no, um, as part of our introduction. Sure. Uh, because many may not know that the palmetto has been used for everything from food and drink to shelter and personal items. Palmetto was an essential resource in Bermuda from the island's first recorded discovery in 1505 to the early uh, 20th century. The terminal bud, fruit, and ground seeds of the plant were a source of food for human and animals alike, and the sap could be processed into fresh juice or fermented into wine. And for stranded shipwreck sailors and early colonialists, the local flora was essential for survival, and plant fiber could be worked into rope for bindings, rigging, or fishing material and shelter, which could be, sorry, and for shelter, and can be found by reworking the leaves into thatching and into basic structures, which Deb is showing us here um, as an excerpt from Graham Foster's Hall of History mural. So just a little bit about Ronnie. Everybody knows Ronnie. <laughs> 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 but just to background her a little bit, in 1986, Ronnie revived the dying art of doll making, handcrafting dolls from banana and palm leaves. And since then, she's been working to preserve the art of weaving with plant-based fibers and has gone on to create a variety of baskets from all natural materials found locally, such as palmetto leaves, screw palm, cedar bark, honeysuckle vine, and Chinese fan palm leaves. And during her workshops, Ronnie demonstrates how simple organic materials can be used creatively to achieve the fashionable looks worn by women throughout the ages, such as hats, bags, and fans, and I think many of us uh, saw that wonderful exhibition of yours with the hats uh, that you did in partnership mm -hmm. with Donna Pink. Yeah. But uh, let's start with your story of Palmetto, um, how you became interested, and, uh, and maybe walk us through your journey, please. And okay. we're really grateful to have you, so thank you so much, Ronnie. Thank you, and it's nice being here, and thank you so much for thinking to have me on. My goodness, it's such a pleasure. I started really with the palmetto. I was interested in palmetto when I started the dolls. And of course, we had a lady in St. George's, Mrs. Marie Gleason, that used to make these beautiful palm dolls. And the palm dolls were similar to like these here. And she has got the um, pandanus palm, which we call screw palm. And of course, her little shawl is knitted from palmetto, and her hat is knitted from palmetto. And Mrs. Gleason, of course, um, <laughs> she put her dolls at H. N. E. Smith's in, in Hamilton, and which most people I don't think will know H. N. E. Smith's now. Um, and we're not uh, that old. Hey, eh? we remember. You do? Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> we're not that young, I should when, say. Yeah. When uh, I was a little girl and my mother took me to H. N. E. Smith and I saw this doll in the showcase and I wanted this doll. Well, this doll never left my mind, actually. And, you know, and they were expensive. And, and my mom and dad couldn't really afford to buy me a, a, 
a palm doll or a banana doll or whatever. But when I was eight years old, my mom gave me a gift and she gave me a banana doll. It was half banana and half palm. And I cherish that doll so much. I still have it. Oh, wow. And um, and of course I I'm an artist. I'm I've always painted since I was knee high, and um, but in 1986 I decided that I wanted to revive this dying art of doll making because Mrs. Gleason was sick and nobody else did these dolls. You know they didn't continue, and it's such a Bermuda tradition. Mm. And of course I called her and she said, my dear child, I taught myself, you know, I expect you to teach yourself. You youngsters, you always want the old ones to teach you. I said, well, that's how we learn, isn't it? So anyway, I said, that's okay. So I, have, I had one of her dolls, so I pulled it apart, put it back together very carefully. And I created my own style of doll, which would be, like this here sort of but similar to the gleason doll but mine is a little um it's not as stiff her dolls are, are taller and stiffer and this one here is made from palmetto her skirt mm -hmm. and of course her little shawl is made from the matting from the coconut palm so any i took my doll in to try i was working at trimming hands then so I took the doll in and Mr. Eldon Trimmingham, bless him, he said, Ronnie, what have you got there? He said, is that one of Mrs. Gleason's doll? So it must have been pretty good. Huh? <laughs> so he said, why don't you leave it in the shop and just see how? And I, I said, oh, okay. And about two weeks later, he phoned me and he said, Ronnie, says, that, that doll, you have any more dolls? Could you bring them in? So I started making the dolls and that's how I started creating. And of course, weaving their little baskets, see, from the palmetto. Wow. It's such detailed work. Yeah. It is, the, yeah. The little umbrella is a scored palmetto. I score the palmetto leaf and turn it and make it into like a... Mm. Oh, okay. Umbrella. And they did, they did that back in the day as well for embellishments for their hats, to embellish the hats, to make them all fancy and fans and all of that. So, and of course I started into these dolls and making the dolls and I couldn't make enough for trimming them and they were exclusive. Oh, wow. And, and then uh, Lisa, um, Gorham came. Is it Gorham? Um, Lisa. Laura? Lo no, not Laura. Lisa lives in Somerset. Her husband has the um, construction business. Uh, I can't remember anyway. So anyway, she came to me. She said, Ronnie, have you ever made an angel? I said, no, I haven't. She said, I don't care what it looks like. She said, make one and I'll buy it because I need it for Christmas. So I designed the little banana angels. And then I designed the treetop angel, or you could use it on a mantle or whatever. Then I went on and on and on. And then <laughs> I started into designing nativity scenes. And the nativity is made from banana and palms. And I weave all the little huts and all of that. So, so my work, it just, it just ongoing, you know, and what, a, what, people say to me sometimes people will bring up something and say oh you have have you ever made such and such and i'll say no i haven't but i'll try it and then i you know and you just go on and i guess with an artist's mind where we have to be creative because we always have to come up with new ideas and and new it's, things. it's also a very patient hand. I've watched you work when they did the workshops. Yeah. You know, it's careful, it's patient. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're, you've you're, got to have patience. Yeah. And forward thinking in terms of getting your materials, having them set aside exactly. and, uh, and to then, be organized. Yeah. And then you have to think of um, the time of picking, you know, collecting your materials and so on. Mm. You know, you can't just go out and um, and collect something and, and use it. You got to wait until that time comes when it's pliable. or my little flowers. I don't know if you can see them. Maybe not on the couch, but I'll show you. 
these are these are all my little flowers that I go to pick down at Devonshire Marsh, which is out now. They're all in bloom now. They don't. Oh, okay. Bloom. Okay. Yeah, and Mrs. Gleason used to use these as well on her dolls. And Mrs. Gleason, we have dolls at Carter House that was made in 1936, and she used these flowers. And you know, they're still intact. Wow, it's amazing. Like I want to ask goes, a stupid question, but how do you keep them? How are they kept so that they don't just crumble? Well, these here, I just um, just take and pick them and I tie them like this and then they'll dry and I'll spray them. Sometimes I color them and I spray them with the um, with um, floral floral um, spray. And um, if not, I'll dip them in food coloring. Just to, okay. I don't want any paint or anything like that. Right. So I have to do it natural. And um, and then once I have the doll together, and I I spray my dolls. I spray them with a lacquer, okay. and it's like a um, it's it's a semi gloss. It's not a gloss lacquer. It's a semi gloss. And what it does, it holds the color, especially in the banana dolls. It holds the color of the um, dress and all of that, and it doesn't turn, and it doesn't strip, and it doesn't dry out, which is really good, which is fabulous. And then, of course, um, making these uh, making these dolls, Mrs. Gleason always used my little umbrella dropped off. See it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mrs. Gleason used the um, the hazelnut, and mm -hmm. uh, for the faces. Oh, mm -hmm. wall, I'm sorry, walnuts for the faces, and. Um, and I started using walnuts until one of the students at school said to me, said, Miss Ronnie, how come the lady is so old? How come she has so many wrinkles in her face? <laughs> so I said, now I've got to look for something else, you know. So now I use the pecan nuts, okay, which are nice and smooth and, you know, so I use those. I don't think I have, no, I don't. I've got a couple with um, with the walnut faces, but they are they're not really that that pretty. Yeah, I so. think I think we actually have one with the walnut face in the yeah, museum right, collection. Yeah, when I first started, because she used the walnuts and I used the walnuts until this child <laughs> said to me once, that "It has so many wrinkles," and I thought, "Let me see if I can get something else to to use," you know. So then I sort of uh, said, well, I really want to get into weaving because working at Carter House and of course, Martha Carter Hayward was a weaver and that was her income back in the 1700s. And I thought, let me get down and because I know how to weave just regular, um, like a regular weave like this here, you know, mm -hmm. that, you know, and this here is with, uh, two, four, six strands. And then I've done it also with, I can't find my, oh. Done it with 10 strands. So then yes. that, this here could be a basket. You could sort of, you know, and then put a bottom on it and a, um, because when they were weaving up at the uh, museum and one lady, she wove like a really thick one like this. I said, you know, you could make a basket from that. I could. And I said, yeah, I said, just attach it and then sew it at the back. I said, and then put a bottom on it. And I showed her how to do the bottom lines and then weave your bottom in. And she, oh gosh, she was overwhelmed. So that was really good. So then I started. And I thought to make money for Carter House as well, to try and uh, get people to come down and do weaving, you know. And I only charge like $20 per person. And uh, they sit out on the bank, or if it's not such good weather, they can be inside and they can weave a basket from the palmetto tree. So, which is good. 
so teaching teach and teaching the children as well you know and um the all all the cultures that we had and we had a really cottage industry back in the 1700s where women used to weave um yards and yards and yards of um, palmetto plating and i have one here let me get up and i'll show you what i'm doing and i'm doing it for the town crier i'm doing it for ed christopher mm -hmm. i'm making him a triton hat so, oh, which can you say that again? Yeah, it's all palmetto. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Oh wow. It's the block that and it's it's exactly his size head that I got the block. Okay. And this is the amount of palmetto weaving that I have to do. So wow. I've, I've done 30 wow. yards here. Wow. So hopefully it'll be enough. If not, I just have to weave and weave and weave. <laughs> until, until it's done well so. done and he's such a tall he's, he's such a tall man i can imagine oh i know that hat's gonna look terrific on him exactly of course it'll have the brim come yes it'll come out about uh, i think it's five six inches from the from the crown from the edge of the crown and then of course it turns up on the sides mm -hmm. And then I'll probably put, because I think he likes a little gold, so I might just finish it off with gold thread. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Very nice. Just to be, you know. So you're taking commissions. Pardon? You're taking commissions. Yes. Uh-huh. That's so great. Yeah, which is good. I mean, it's, this, is, this takes me about six months. Wow. Because it'll take me about two months just to do the weaving. Yeah. You know? And I usually sit and do it, watching television or whatever, or just in my studio, just being quiet <laughs> and all my weaving that I do. So then, of course, in creating, this is our palmetto. Let me turn this down a bit. This here is our palmetto, our beautiful leaves that we can create from, you know. And this here's a basket that I've done. Seen as one from one leaf. Oh, that's wow. really pretty. Yeah. So what I do, I take the leaf and I cut it about five inches, the base, the stalk, and then peel. You know, uh, bring the um, leaves down and and separate them, just like this here. <clears throat> Like this. this is the Chinese pen palm. And this is what I used up at the Maritime Museum as well. I taught them how to do this. And the Chinese pen palm, it's dry now. And you take and you uh, strip it and th these become spokes. So then you start weaving. So I start weaving from the top because these are, we have quite a few leaves here. So then I'll weave from the top. And then I'll come down. See? Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So I weave, and this here's the star. I'll cut that off when I get, you know, going. And this is the inside. So I weave from the top, and then I'll just keep going round and round. And then you pull it, and then it automatically it'll fold up. Mm. Hmm. I quite like the stock on it, I've got to tell you. <laughs> like it? Yeah. Oh, maybe I'll leave it then. <laughs> yeah, I do. It's a neat that feature one, to have. Yeah, and this one here is a finer, a finer weave. See, that's mm -hmm. really fine. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. So, and I've done that with the, um, I've done that with the Chinese pen palm, which this is, and plus I've used palmetto. So that's why the, it's light and dark. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Contrast, the light and dark. Yeah. So, which is really, and this will be a cute little basket. But I normally keep this for the children to, to weave, you know, when I'm doing the schools, go into, into schools and so on. Of course, most of them want to take it home so they get, but I can finish it home. <laughs> <laughs> You, you mentioned earlier um, 
the the industry, right, of, of women in the late 1600s. Yeah. Late um, 1700s, yes. Yeah, course, the there was a large cottage industry here. And mainly, it was mainly in St. David's, St. George's, and Baylor's Bay. Um, I guess the eastern end of the island, I don't know why. Probably because the ships came into St. George's and not Hamilton. 1700s, and of course, um, the weaving was done. Martha Carter Haven, I forgot, I forget now how many um, coils of weaving that she had done. I th uh, was hundreds of yards of weaving. And you know, then a great big coil like I have here, and they would coil it up and, and sent off to England, mm -hmm. and they would make the Bermuda hats and bags from. And that was in the 1700s. And why they, they, um, they like the Bermuda hats and bags is because Martha Carter Hayward had woven a palmetto hat and she sent it to Queen Anne. And uh, Queen Anne loved this hat. It was like, oh my goodness. And it became a Vogue fashion in London. Can you imagine in the 1700s? <laughs> Ronnie, you gotta little, come down a little bit so we can oh, see you. Okay. For a ship your in the 1700s, there you go. little Bermuda. I mean, this little island, you know? And here we are in Vogue, you know, and everyone wanted a, wanted a Bermuda hat. And that's how it all started. Mm -hmm. So that was really incredible. So we were really on the map. And we are responsible as well for the Bahamians doing weaving because we taught them. Okay. Wow. I never knew that. No, I didn't know Dr. Kim, Yeah, Dr. Kim Dismo. I was away then. And she brought this doctor. And he did get a, um, gave a talk at Community and Cultural Affairs. And he was saying that, you know, the Bermudians had taught the Bahamians how to weave. Because what happened was in the 1700s, 1800s, it was so many ships coming in. And of course, people were hungry and they needed, they needed food. And in the palmetto tree as well, if you cut right down at the very top, and you cut right into the um, the heart, I should say, and it's like a cabbage, and they boil that and they eat it. Mm -hmm. So, see, a lot of trees were were slaughtered, and a lot of trees were tapped for making wine. They called it mm -hmm. palmetto bibi, and um, and and of course they lost a lot of trees, and of course the industry of weaving had died. Right. So they a lot of ladies packed up, families they packed up and they went to the Bahamas right. and they continued their weaving. Now there they have the thatch palm. I think the thatch palm and the palmetto palm is similar. And um, they, they didn't use a, uh, the coconut palm. That's just recent days, but it was the um, thatch palm that they used. And they made hats and bags. And I think it's reeds they use as well, like the marsh reeds, you know, and they made a lot of straw bags and so on. We talked so about when you were at the, um, at the museum, we talked a little bit about whether or not the weaving would come back as a craft in response to our, uh, our need for more sustainable ways in which we're going to live our lives. To exactly. use baskets exactly. perhaps in a in a more utilitarian yeah. way than uh -huh. they have been moving from decoration. Um, and Deb and I were talking that you know separately from that, there's also people are right now spending more time at home discovering exactly. new, and they new talents. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So do you think I there did. might be a resurgence in this context? Yeah. yeah. Well, we have a really fantastic girl, Camilla. Camilla, she works at the Zoological mm -hmm. Society. Oh right, yeah. And. Um, she did the online basket weaving and she had me on for a couple of days, you know, a couple of um, days per week. She had it, I think, Monday and Wednesday. And I came on as well and talked to the ladies and she had about six ladies. Nice. And, mm -hmm. um, and they all had their baskets and they were so excited. And of course, and I was showing them all the different weaving and all the different baskets that they could weave. Like this basket here, mm -hmm. this is this is woven from the um, I call it the blue spruce, grows along the North Shore Road. You know the hedge. Okay, the, yeah, yeah. 
so I forget what it's called. The but but yeah, not the I, not the Canadian blues, Bruce. That's for sure. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, so I do that, and I and he said, "Oh my gosh, but where's the? What did you use for the handle?" And I said, "It's grapevine, because we mm. have a grapevine growing outside." So I cut that when it's dry. I tell you and, what, if I end up going outside and seeing some portion of my garden gone, I'll. <laughs> You made a run to town lately. <laughs> exactly. There. But and it is so really fulfilling. I'm sorry, I don't want to talk in depth, but just it is really fulfilling, right? To to be able to make is. something, to grow you can something. Go out and go into the um I call it my my jungle here. And I go into the I go down at Vesey Street mm -hmm. and then I and I get the cattail. Cattails look like this here, the cattails. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. And you know they have the brown, the brown flower that comes up, and then I weave baskets from that. See, and then I finish it off with palmetto because the palmetto is sturdy. Right. So the cattail basket. And Ronnie, where can someone find those right now? Where, well, cattail? when we when we evolve and reopen again, where can people find them? Are they for sale anywhere? The, my baskets? Mm -hmm. um, not really. I don't really put them anywhere for sale. But okay. if people come to the house or they, like when I was up at the um, Maritime Museum, I sold a handbag and I sold a basket and something else, a visitor. Oh, that's, she I didn't know that. She I, didn't, I, I didn't know we had a side market going on. <laughs> oh, no. And she said, oh, my gosh. She says, I really would like. So I had to go to her hotel oh. and um, <laughs> pick up my check. <laughs> and she was I'm so like, glad to hear that. That's great. Yeah. And, of course, fans. The fans. That's a, that's a Chinese fan palm. And then the woven palmetto to um to sort of uh put it together and then i stitch that on i have clothes pegs there for now and i stitch that on and i make my own pegs and that's just from the uh, chinese one oh. it's, it's, so yeah. there. and what else can i show you I, think I, I, I want to keep us up. We can just stick to a little bit of time. Okay. Um, Deb, did you want to uh, ask any other specific questions? Um, I think the main question that kind of, I think we've touched upon it where, you know, it's interesting to see people have this resurgence of um, kind of interest in crafts that maybe we had thought we'd lost or that were dying out. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited to to hear that more and more people are getting involved. And it sounds like are, the reaction yeah. has been incredibly positive. And I know exactly. we see on the museum, you know, people are really searching for those connections with history and right. um, mm -hmm. and learning from that. So yeah, I think it's great to see the that. doll making, which is yeah. a tradition. The weaving, the palmetto weaving, you know. For which sure, is yeah which is really, and people should really try and, um, and learn how. So they said, well, how can I make a hat? I said, you got to learn how to weave first. You know, you yeah. got to do that weaving. I said, once you do that weaving, I said, you can just go right off and do anything that you, that you want. And another thing I work from is the pandanus palm. The pandanus palm leaf. Oh, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I gather those up and cut all the little saw edges off because they can prick you. And I did, I do baskets from them as well. See? Wow. I think they're wonderful. I'm just sitting here going, I could use a couple of these baskets. <laughs> I know, me too. I'm thinking about places where I'd put them in my house. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Exactly. You could weave them, darling. Yeah, and I guess I gotta up easy. my skills. That's an easy weave because if you cut your pandanus palm and you've got to cut them all even, you know, um, width, say this here is like an um, inch and a half width, and you put your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spokes down, and then you do your other seven spokes the other way, and you weave them in and out, and you've got your basket. I like how you make it seem so simple. 
I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to take notes. <laughs> Ronnie, thank you so much for your time. Okay. Yes, thank you, Ronnie. Thank you so much for having me. So if anyone would like to broaden their knowledge, come to Carter House. Visit Carter House and sorry I'm I'm sort of um putting Oh we Carter we know House. you're oh, we, sorry, we yeah, know that's we your heart museum. We know. We know. <laughs> and when we're you know, I'm down there the first Sunday in the month and I'm always got something, I'm always weaving or doing something. If anybody comes, I just hand it to them and, and get them to weave. So Excellent. and just to clarify for everybody who who's listening who may not know where, where Carter House is, that is in St. David's and it's worth the drive. Definitely. Let the drive. And now that we've got a new, um, a new, uh, we've vented, revented, I should say. And of course, with all the history and so on, it's really good. Yeah. Definitely. I think we've got two pools of the islands to cover, probably in two different experiences. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So different. Yeah. Exactly. So, which is great. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. Okay. Thank you, and thank you. And you all have a great week. Thanks. And a safe week. Yes. Be well. Yes, you okay. too. Okay. okay. All the best. Righto. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.